To begin, stick the NMIBP2 backplate slags through the motherboard. As you can see, it has three distinct holes, two at the top and one half hole at the bottom. These make it very easy to avoid installing it upside down. Simply making sure that these holes align with the screws on the back of the mainboard solves this step. Side note, I am installing the cooler base plate while the motherboard is outside of the PC, even though my computer case does allow access to the backplate of the mainboard, no matter if it is already screwed in. Most modern cases allow the same. Now you need to put in the NMIPS1 spacers on the legs of the backplate. I like to call them short, fat plastic tubes. The NHD15 comes with three sets of spacers. Use the black ones. The grey and the white ones are incorrect. The white ones, for example, are too loose if you try them out. The black ones have a noticeably snug fit on the back plate's legs by comparison. To proceed, the CPU needs to be installed on the motherboard. If you haven't yet, remove the socket protector known as the PNP cap, loosen the lever, insert the CPU in the correct direction, double and triple check the correct direction, and tighten the lever again. The two NMIMB2 mounting bars or cooler holders can be installed horizontally or vertically. If the fans are supposed to blow vertically, downwards or upwards, then the bars need to be installed vertically, one on the left and one on the right. If the fans are supposed to blow horizontally or sideways, then the bars need to be installed horizontally, one at the top and one at the bottom. Even though the bars have triple holes, thankfully only the middle ones will work for LGA1200. Do not apply any force to bend the legs. Instead double check that you are using the correct base plate. The curved sides of the bars should point outwards. Once you are sure about the alignment, you can screw on the NMITS1 thumb screws. Tighten them gently by hand. and then give each a gentle screwdriver tightening. Do not use excessive force. The manual states maximum torque of 0.6 Newton meter. This isn't too helpful, but it does get the point across that it should be significantly less tight than screwing together IKEA furniture. The next step is to apply the thermal paste, but first get the heatsink body ready. This means taking out the fan, which by default is built in. You do this by loosening the steel clips. Also, in my case, it was preferable to put the motherboard into the PC first. This made it easier to be 100% sure about the orientation of the mounting bars and consequently the cooler. It made installation of the CPU power cable and RAM modules easier. And it makes it easier to screw in the mainboard Otherwise, the huge cooler would be in the way of some of the screws. Please give the video a thumbs up if it helps, by the way. At this point, I made sure to know how to proceed before continuing. If you are installing along, watch the next few steps first. Squeeze a little bit of the NTH1 thermal paste onto the CPU. The guide says a small drop, 4 to 5 mm diameter. That's between 0.15 and 0.2 inches. Using too much thermal paste makes it less efficient. Now remove the heatsink protection and place the heatsink onto the CPU. A 
A screwdriver tool is included, but you can use your own screwdriver if it's long and thin enough. The guide recommends to make two or three turns on each of the two screws until both are fully tightened gently. Don't use excessive force. Again, the guide names 0.6 Newton meters. Again, this just tells me don't treat this like IKEA furniture. Reattach the center fan using its steel clips. The attachment should be under enough tension so that the longest steel clip part does touch the rubber corners. Depending on the layout of CPU cooler fan headers on the mainboard, you might want to connect the first fan now. Then insert the steel clips onto the second fan. Looking at the first fan helps figuring out how to do this. The steel clips have to be attached on the opposite end of the side touching the cooler. I use the number of fins visible above the rubber corners of a fan to determine the placement height of the fans. Both my center and secondary fan leave two to three fins visible. This is because my RAM modules have a very low profile. In your case, you might need to install the secondary fan higher. Now connect the secondary fan to the motherboard CPU fan headers. My motherboard, the ASRock B460 Phantom Gaming, has two CPU fan headers. If yours only has one, a Y-split cable is included. If you have extreme silence needs, you can use low noise adapters. But be mindful of the order when combining with a Y-split cable. I am very happy with my purchase, but to be fair, I had been using a stock cooler on my i5-6600 before, so I was used to a very bad cooling solution for years, not aware of what I could have. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. I use this cooler on my i7-10700K CPU. If you are interested in the 10700K, check out my other video, in which I compare it to my old i5-6600 and document the performance that I get. I'd love to hear about your performance increase after your upgrade. See you in the next video. Until then, ciao!